what's going on guys so we're out here today um, messing around with this old red rum and uh, there she is say hello anyways I learned something very valuable out here getting my mess together let me just give you an idea look at this crap can't wait I got DJI wireless mic coming and I really can't wait that's gonna be uh, a welcome a welcome upgrade um, but today I'm out here with red rum and as I left off last time last year if you if you took a look I had a short little video of my catastrophic failure of this um, of this fork seal I thought it was water at first I came out you know I left my bike out in the rain yeah I know and I knew that this had a little split in it it didn't look the, the greatest you know even this one it had like cracks like this so this was the pre damage or the pre noticing of the damaged view of it It was kind of cracked but it was okay um, but now it's pretty clear this this year it was dripping all down so it got all over the brakes well you can see right there a lot of crud I don't know if you can see that but a lot of crud on there and it got the brake pads all jacked up and um, and they're slippery now so they're soaked with the oil so they're useless if you soak your your brakes in oil from your fork seals then that stuff soaks right in man and there's there's no getting rid of it so I got to get these things off of it um, now of course as you guys know I'm stuck out here in my parking spot uh, because I haven't got my house yet and I don't have a garage so I would do the full fork um, you know uh, um, rebuild if, if you know if I had the facilities to do it but I don't so I am going to uh, just get them off and I'm going to take them over to a local shop you know he's going to do them real cheap because I'm taking them off so um, that's what we're going to do today we are going to get the forks off of the bike and get them there and I'm going to show you like what you need to it's remarkably easy actually um, uh oh There's Jeff. Hey, what's going on? Okay, had a quick call from Jeff. Had a little mishap with his drone. Anyhow, um, so yeah, we are going to, uh, today I'm gonna get these forks off of here so I can get them over to the uh, the garage. Um, dude said he's gonna do it really cheap, you know, if I, if I take them off. So that's what we're gonna do, man. We're gonna yank them off of here. So I am going to use my trusty flat scissor jack. Uh, you guys remember from my other, uh, I did a video on that. It's working well so far, man. We're gonna see, we'll put it up here and this is probably gonna be staying like this. Well, not like this, but it's gonna be up without a tire, without forks for maybe a day or two. Um, it's gonna be raining, so maybe four days straight, who knows? Anyways, let's get it up off the air. All right, so obviously we gotta get all this stuff off of here. So the first thing you're gonna have to do is get your, you know, your tire out of there um, with your, uh, I think they're, you know, this is 22 or four, I don't know don't let me lie to you and then a hex on the side so you got to get this off get the uh the uh um the shaft out of there get your brake calipers off your fender has to come off the lights and then you're going to leave the last two here here and here tight still um and of course these two to get it off but uh i uh not sure if i have to take this cap off or not um it has like a little cap on the top. I know when you're actually doing it, you got to take that off. The spring is under there and all the juice, all the juicy bits. So I don't know, I'm not doing that. So hopefully this will slide through here when I loosen this up. Um, and, and down here, this triple tree type of deal here is going to be holding it on. So I think I'll loosen this up here first and hit this and see if it'll slide. If not, I got to take that. It's an aluminum bolt in there, really easy to strip. So I really don't want to take it off if I don't have to. I'll let them deal with it, so. Let me get at it. So I'm fed up with this wire already in my way. And that's going to be a big one. Size big one. The one I do not have. Interesting. This may all have been for nothing. Hmm. Let's think about this. So I was able to pop that off from here which is this the whole rod in it? oh no that's a little bolt maybe just massaged out proper massaging okay so 
sort of a blank mission here. I don't have the tool that goes into here. Uh, and oddly enough, Honda did not think that anyone in their toolbox would ever have to take off their axle. I can't find anything that really works with it. Um, I don't know. Off to the store. All right, so finally got the right part. Needed this, this little thing right here, which is a, a big and right here. Boom, fits right in there real nicely. Did I get that in shot? Yeah. So you need that one. If you don't have one, it's a 17 millimeter. Um, 17 milli, I don't know if you can see that, if it's shining too bright or not, but yeah. I got the Duralast one. Maybe it's last, it'll last longer. It's in the name, so, okay. Anyhow, I'm gonna get at it and get this wheel off. So, back at you in a minute. Okay, so, one more thing I wanted to share with you. When you get the axle this far, you had, I had to tap on this side a little bit on the edge there, and then, of course, I damaged it a little bit. If you got something softer, use that, but I tapped on it a little bit and got it this way, but when you get it to this point, then you can kind of take either a screwdriver or a smaller hex wrench and put that through there and kind of pull it the rest of the way because mine is dry and that's an issue. I got to get my grease and make sure that's greased up when I put it back on. I'm going to grease everything, um, you know, when I get them back, but, uh, but for right now, if yours is like mine and dried out, oh, please get some grease on there. Um, but yeah, use this as leverage and then yank it the rest of the way out. Wiggle it all the way out. Wow, that thing is dry as a bone. Well, I mean, there's a little, a little bit on there, but that's terrible. Normally, don't ever put this down on the ground like this, but I'm gonna be, I'm gonna do the grass, but don't ever do that either. But I'm gonna be thoroughly cleaning that and re-greasing it. So, as with that bolt there. So. Now that I pop my tire free, I get this out of the way. And there's a spacer here. Just remember that brake side. And there's another spacer. And just as you, I don't know if you could see if I'm far enough. Let me drop this tire. Anyways, these I just took out directly from each side. So you give you a little reference. There is a little ledge there. I know it's, well, very little edge. There's like, let me get greasy for you. I don't know if you could see that, but there's like ridges on it. Those ridges go in. At least that's where mine were facing when I did it. So, all right. So again, keep these in a safe place and a clean place. I'm going to be polishing all mine up and, uh, and greasing them before I put them back. So they'll get all cleaned up. All right. So after that, of course, your fender has to come off. So that would be one of these here, and I believe it is that, yes. You can pop this off. It, sometimes it's a little it's a little tricky getting off. It can be uh, kind of wedged in there. So, oh, great. And I got my lights connected in there. Son of a gun. All right, so I got a light kit on here too, and some of them are underneath the, the front here. And taped against this thing so when i take this off it's going to be attached still okay let's see so i'm almost there i got like i said this light is just hanging here but i think once i take this off it'll it'll be enough and can can sit like that i got a towel under there so it's not you know scraping up hopefully but uh You'll need a 12 millimeter to get your calipers off of the side here. And that's what I got here. So I'm going to grab these off of here. All right, with both uh, lights off here, this actually goes the opposite way towards the inside of that. However, we're off to one of two more things that are holding it in place. This one here and that one up there. And like I said, hopefully I don't have to take that top cap off because it's aluminum. Oh, and bad things can happen if you don't do it right. So do it right sometimes. I mean, 60% of the time, I'm right all the time. It's, it's a fact, I mean, that's science, so. All right, let's get these loosened up and yank these puppies off of here. All right. 
really kind of awkward because I have my fender laying there. Oh, those are those are torqued on there. I think those are yeah, that was German specs. That was tor torqued to to Guten tight. That's usually what I do my torque specs to are the German specs. Good and tight is all you need. That one was good and tight. Oh, sorry, Fender. Let's get that under there. Oh, it's scratching shit. This is so janky what I'm doing here. Good thing is I only have to, I believe I only have to loosen these up. So that's one. This one is fairly loose. My hands are soaked. And of course, a different size. Did I tell you this was eight millimeter um, hex wrench? Right here, eight millimeter. And the other one, I won't leave you out there. No, it wasn't that one. I don't know. I guess I am leaving you out there. So, and then this one, let's, whew, I gotta hold on to this, make sure it don't slide out on me. Oh yeah, that's that's a good good piece of advice to give you guys. Hold on to your your thing because it will slide up. Oh yes, it is. One crank, and there she is. <laughs> so I got one side off. As you see, they come off pretty easily. Um, I'm pretty surprised. Well, a few different bolts, they pop right out. Now, if you're a little intimidated with you know rebuilding them yourself and you know getting all the all the parts in there that's really not that complicated i don't have a garage though so i'm not going to mess with that i'm not even going to attempt that unless i got my own little space to drain it and a tub and all that and i don't have this here so the easiest part and the cleaner part is for me to take this some gun down to the uh to the shop and have them do it so they can get messy it's not too bad and i'm back on the road so i'm just going to pop that other side off there it is. Gets to a certain point and then these things just slide, slide on out. Found some things that you should probably be aware of with your own too. And now I'm kind of concerned is right here. I'm seeing some pitting and it may be some surface stuff. I'm going to go up and kind of clean these things up before I take them. Um, and try to clean that up. I got some aluminum polish and chrome polish, whatever I can do to clean these things up as best I can. And when they come back, I'm gonna clean them up again. I'm sure I'll have a bunch of fingerprints and oil on them again. But at least I could do some detailed stuff. Um, but yeah, let's see the other sides of them. Uh, not too bad, not too bad. I mean, see a little, sur ooh, <laughs> why do I keep looking? I guess you look for stuff and you're gonna find it. Let's see, yeah, that, that feels pretty deep. So we're gonna try to clean them up and see what's going on with those spots. They're the only spots and something tells me these are the spots where my windshield was touching and banging them up. Uh, all right, so we got them off. And just to give you another idea of my handy dandy little Jack, man, that scissor jack is awesome. I'm glad I got it. Because here we go again, saving money. Because otherwise they wanted over $300 to, uh, if I would have brought the, the bike in. It's getting crazy these days, but up on this, and that's where she'll stay for about probably three, four days. Let me wipe my face, because I'm fitzing over here. I really got to figure out something with that. I don't like that just sitting there like that. So I'm going to try to figure out um, how to better secure that. Um, and uh, yeah, get these things over here and get on the road as soon as possible. Because like I was telling you guys, I got some other things for um, this bike. Um, I told you I'm going to be getting rid of these bags here because look at them. They're just they're just so sad. So sad bags. We're going to get rid of the sad bags. And we're going to... Uh, get some hard bags on there that lock because when we go to Sturgis I'm going to need something to lock stuff up so it only makes sense to uh to get them on there and I think they look better man these these bags they get wet and they just sag and they were the cheapies anyways come I mean I'm getting cheap plastic ones but 
come to find out I paid more than the, for these so-called cheap ones than the ones that I'm ordering. So I don't know. We'll see. So don't be afraid to do this stuff, man. It's not all that scary. It's not all that complicated. Um, you know, you just, you can't be afraid to do this stuff. You just got to get down, especially if you love your beast. If you love your baby, man, you got to get in there, get your hands dirty. So, um, as you see, it was a couple bolts. We had a little snafu. I had to run to the store, but, um, you know, it happens. It was just down the street. And now I got the tool that I'm going to need for however long. Anyways, um, so I'm going to get this thing wrapped up for now. I'm going to let you guys go because I'm running a little bit long with this one. Uh, I'll let you know what's going on. Maybe I'll give you a little peek at um, the place that I'm going. Um, so when I get these things back from the, uh, the shop, it's supposed to be raining for the next four days. So probably won't be out here for, you know, four days. It's going to stay like this. Hopefully she's secure. But, um, but yeah, I'll let you know what happens when I get them back on. I'll do another one. Uh, with some of the other stuff that I'm doing too. So anyways, guys, again, if you like the videos, hit that subscribe, hit that like button, and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace. Mm -hmm.